Time flies when you're having fun. Sure is true when you're on vacation and couldn't ring more true on Chasing the Sun. Since Travis's first time on the show, fun and friendship took root and emerged. We'll float through six seasons of good time fishing and the growth of a great friendship in an amazing place. Here we are. Great way to end the day. Chasing the Sun is brought to you by Holiday Inn Resort, Panama City Beach. Hummingbird, simply, clearly better. Dulce Vida Tequila. Grundings, we are fishing. And by Pirates Cove Marina, you enjoy the Gulf, we'll take care of the rest. went back to some of the earliest Chasing the Sun episodes. Going back now and looking at those things, I look ridiculous. I mean, Which is fine. If you, can't look, if you can't look back and laugh at yourself, <laughs> this wasn't any fun anyway. I mean, that's what it's all about. Yeah. The good news is, is that it didn't take us long to realize like, all right, Justin by himself is a little sketchy here. So we need somebody <laughs> to come in that can team up with them. And, and tie all this together, take it up a level, okay, and make it. Well, I don't know about taking it up a level, but <laughs> that's true. <laughs> Today on Chasing the Sun, Travis Holman joins Justin Leake and PCB just in time for bull redfish. So my approach to fishing involves more of my instinct and my gut, because the whole time we fished on tour, it was about us with no information. So what we'll do, we'll fish a heavy jig head, let it fall through these bait balls. No, I get on the boat with Justin. Yeah. Dude knows bottom. what's up. I, I mean, it's natural. All right, we can fish, boom. Got it. Works. I knew it was gonna be our first day on the water together fishing, and I thought, you know, I mean, I've had some tournament partners that over time you develop that, that hidden language that you don't even really have to communicate much verbally. Oh, look at that. Always got a bite. Big old guy. Hold on, hold on. Look at him. Oh, look at them all coming up. You know the situation. You know what the fish are doing. You know what each other is doing, and everything falls into place. Well, I'm gonna pull him straight up right here. He had four with him. You don't keep reeling them up, no, you and gotta, you gotta, that's what people want to do because they got a cool uh, fish you on. Pause and let them hang out, and get your, you know, you got to give your partner on the boat time. Any buddies with you? Gosh, look at that super tanker. Oh, they're, with, they're all with them. What is it? Reds? Redfish, but there's a bunch with them. You're right on me. Put a bait down there, like and then you bring them up. In the... Exactly. And we're going to share the fun. If you're going to break your rod on a redfish, might as well, might as well make one. it a big one and do it two at a time. <laughs> <laughs> it was great. I got to tell you, I'm super impressed with Justin. He's got skills. It makes me uh, very happy to be around him fishing because I don't have to question him. I love this man. <laughs> You know, this fishery here is really all I know and all I've ever known, so I don't really have too much to compare it to. So that's one cool thing about having you here is you get to look at it from a different point of view. This is a Travis experience for me. Sometimes you can try to scientifically come up with all these reasons why things happen. They're fish, they're wild animals. Um, you know, they do what they want to do. Look at all the redfish. There they are. All right. My first trip east. Yeah, and you would think, like, the water's clear. We pick these nice days with the north wind, so it's calm on the beach. <laughs> you would think if there was, like, 100 redfish swimming around in two feet of water, it'd be easy to see. Damn, well, you know, it's all diet, and they blend into the surroundings, and, you know, they only stick out over grass. <laughs> <laughs> no doubt. The shallower a redfish is, the more spooky he is. And if something splashes down really close to him, he's out of there. Trout. Big trout. No, it's not. It's a big skipjack. Sure? Yeah. Well, I saw a big trout. But we started catching trout, too, and I was like, oh, this is cool to burn a little time, let those fish show up on the beach. Big it is trout. a trout. Oh, yeah. Yeah. Look at all the bluefish or whatever trying to eat them, though. Big trout. Oh, they did eat them. Look at that. Oh, wow. Well, the funny thing is, when you get a trout halfway back to the boat, and all of a sudden, bluefish is like, oh, look, dude, just slice them right in half. Little gumdrop. 
reason why we love them. Look at that. Sorry, buddy. Maybe they're like a lizard, you know? Maybe that'll grow back. Probably not. There's no doubt those fish were there and we rode by them, I don't know how many times looking for them. And I had pretty much given up on them. But I thought, knew where they were, he yeah. couldn't find them. Yeah. <laughs> then all of a sudden, bam. Now here's the deal. I'm not gonna sit here and talk about this guy a lot because that's cool still right here. Redfish, back in the water. Yeah, we jammed on those dudes. <laughs> that was rad. But we couldn't even actually, I mean, it's so hard to portray what we're actually doing. Yeah. On camera, because I mean, we were like whamming on. Like, yeah. it was on, bro. It happened. That was so fun. <laughs> Florida redfish. I don't know anything more red, white, and blue than fishing right here along the beach, right on the Emerald Coast. Jets taking off over your head and just as free as we can be. If you don't have a whole lot of options and you got something going on, guess what you do? You go with what's going on. They made me stay and keep catching so guys. I did not want to. That is a slimy critter. Mm -hmm. This episode is supposed to be off the water. Kind of anyway. Justin and Travis reminisce about some of their many adventures around Panama City Beach. Does a float tube and a lazy river count is on the water? I don't know how everybody else would view it, but to me, the show itself has come a long way. It's not just just me, but us as a, as a team. Yeah, the evolution that's it. Of us. That's it. Sure. I didn't have a partner at the time. I needed a partner. For me, this always has been doing cool stuff with cool people. Yeah. I mean, that's the whole reason why I got into this. But being here at Holiday Resort allows us to do something that we don't really ever get to do, and that's take time to reflect. Yeah. And relax. When you're here, you know, we just go fishing. Yeah. It's completely out of my norm. It's definitely Travis time. It's, yeah. it's not a it's not a chart. That's it. That's for sure. I, it seems like I always have my kind of little go-to, this is what we're gonna do. And we never do that when you're here. We just kinda go. Looking Rainbow, for new baby. things. Just check it out. Which yeah. is cool, you know, we're treating it like a tournament. Yep. That's the thing about making TV, y'all. Our windows of opportunity are today. There's no grand plan and all the cool stuff that we get to see. Honestly, we don't get to share everything with you guys that we normally go for on a daily basis. Yeah. Sometimes it's our best catch of the trip, you know, that we just don't get the right footage for. It. Well, unfortunately, we had a camera roll while we were catching so fast. Right? I knew this was going to be one of the easier shows we did. Top waters, big bull reds, how can you beat that? There's a cold front that just came down. For us, it's quite a bit chillier than we'd like. So with these frontal conditions that we have today, it's just natural that we're going to have obstacles to overcome. I think our fallback, especially in this area, is going to be the redfish. Our new challenge becomes trying to figure out where have they gone and what are they doing. I like to just have anything pull. Oh, got a little pullback. You and the camera crew on the boat and go out there and throw plugs and catch nothing but sail cats. Oh, he was so frustrated with that first one. I was like, oh, yep, that might be a catfish. He's like, no, no, no that's not a catfish. High potential to be a sail cat, though. Since we Most people don't think of a catfish biting a topwater plug, but a sail cat's different than another catfish. <laughs> yeah, right. And that's because his mouth is on the bottom of his head. And it's just not really something that you would think is going to reach up towards the surface and grab a plug. Cool. See, normally we would have left, except it was blowing like 35 miles an hour out of the west, and there was absolutely nowhere else to go. Yeah, we didn't I mean, have we, other options. That That's why it. I always talk about, you know, different parts of the year, different seasons. Oh, he's right on it, right on it. He's right on it. Come on, eat it. There it is. <laughs> <laughs> is that not cool? I've got the giant. If you don't have a whole lot of options and you got something going on, guess what you do? You go with what's going on. They made me stay and keep catching sour cows. I did not want to. 
If you wonder why there's so many episodes of Chasing the Sun, just me and Travis red fishing. We're on the board. <laughs> no, it's red. Small guy. It was, looked like a whole lot of fish. Didn't it? <laughs> yeah. They're in every different location, no matter where you're at. If you're near the water here, you're near a redfish. Oh, sure. Never get tired of catching these guys, don't matter what size they are. You, you find them. Beach past flats. Yeah. <laughs> I, mean, I mean, maybe in between, but you don't really want to mess with those guys because they're moving too fast anyway. A little red. Little baby red, red? Yeah. I got his brother. You got his little brother. <laughs> yeah. And possibly his twin. Oh, no, no, it's the puffer. Oh, you got a puffer? Yeah. Red. Come here, little a red fish and a puffer fish. Sneak it out with a blue tail. Some say the blue tail is to uh, throw them off with the eyes, make them look like blue crab, but no real scientific reason for it. Just looks cool. All right, little buddy. One of my favorite ways to catch a redfish on a paddle board. Coming up on Chasing the Sun. Justin and Travis abandon the perfectly good boat to go super shallow in search of Travis's first redfish. On a paddle board, that is. Good news is, if I fall down right here, it's only about, boom, five inches deep. No tippy tippy. I like no tippy tippy. I mean, I'm gravity hard. challenged as it is, you know, and then you throw a paddle board under me in some shallow water, which is cool because I can step off the board, but yeah. And I, that was my first time to really redfish. I mean, I've done it in little bitty boats, you know, yeah. and poling and micro skiffs and stuff, but I've never actually done it on a paddle board, which to tell you the truth is not <laughs> easy. No. <laughs> either. Oh, 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 we're doubled up on the drum, baby. <laughs> What's better than one black drum? A pair of them, baby. The sight fishing at its finest. One of the beautiful things about fishing the Gulf here is that every day is different. But a first will always be a first. And one of our favorite firsts is when Travis targeted his first redfish on a paddle boat. So this is the episode where me and Travis are both gonna get on a paddle board. I mean, these are pretty big stable paddle boards. But these paddle boards were on extremely stable and they're built to fish on. And uh, even though Travis is a you know, big bulky guy, he got on this paddle board and was extremely comfortable and able to get that board closer than you can get any boat to fish. So this water's been coming in all night. So there'll be some fish out here around the fringes of this marsh, but most of them are gonna be up in that marsh. It's yeah. nice to slow down and smell the roses, and truthfully, it's kind of fun to actually have some new experiences when it comes to fishing. You know, jump on a paddleboard, I've surfed and wakeboarded and done all that stuff, so I figure, you know, it's board sport and do it. Yeah, it's a little different. On a paddleboard, when you're going slow, if you step on the edge, it goes down. <laughs> so do I. That's where I wanted to be anyway. <laughs> well, I remembered that there's a, a little pocket there I could step off. But we've come a long way since then. We've actually developed a, a way to get that same experience. But to me, it's way more fun because the micro skiff, the way we do it now, we're on the same boat together. All right, and I don't have to worry about a paddle and a rod and a cooler and a yeah. cup and all this stuff that's manageable, but yeah. not, I mean. All right, well. You know, last time we did a paddleboard show, we were both on an actual paddleboard, which worked out pretty good. We caught some fish, had a good time. Well, now I have a micro skiff that's basically like a big paddleboard with a motor. Surfboard on. Surfboard with a motor. <laughs> so, I mean, we can get crazy shallow. Say. Surfboard with a motor. <laughs> Ain't no paddling. <laughs> yeah, and we're not giving up anything to do that. You know, I mean, this thing will still access those same shallow areas. And in, in some situations, because you don't have a fin uh, like, you know, like you would on a paddle board, if we can be quieter on the micro skiff by not dragging on the bottom at all, you're going to catch more fish because they don't, know, they don't know that we're there. And I get to move around and stretch my legs. You don't get stuck in one spot when you're, you know, gravity challenged like and me. And you get to do all the <laughs> fishing because I push you around the whole time. <laughs> Got him. Yeah. Feels like a little bulldog red. 
say, I thought I heard him pop up on the surface like a dang trout. Yeah. Pretty fish. Cute little bugger. Throughout the year, 12 months a year, there's something really cool to do on the water here. It keeps this from ever getting old because of that. That's it. I was gonna throw the bigger rod at the bigger. I know. <laughs> That's a pretty dolphin right here. Wow. Beautiful. Look at that guy. How about that? I have no idea what might come up, you know? What we might see. Hey, I don't know what it is, but it's a, it's a lot good... different than bass fishing, I'll tell you yeah. that. Yeah. Is it Amberjack? Yeah, it sure is. We got here. A little Jack Jack. Yeah, a little Jack. You know, my favorite part about fishing out there is in this particular area. Pretty good variety. Oh, yeah. When it comes to fun, not gonna lie, Jacks are a blast. You get them. Oh, well, we found some of them bite. <laughs> That's a black drum there. Yeah. Oh, 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 oh. Oh, we're doubled up on the drum, baby. <laughs> What's better than one black drum? A pair of them, baby. Sight fishing hey, strikes again. That's it, man. Look, this white sand bottom through here. And we caught redfish, sheep's head, and another black drum. Got me, got me. Oh, baby. Be ready for this jump. Boom. <laughs> you know, this is what makes tarpon fishing so much different than any other type of fishing. A big fish in shallow water that jumps like this and only comes through here on these migratory patterns, it just doesn't happen with any other fish. Look at that. Oh, yeah. Everywhere's got their cool little things, but like we have so much of everything. Yo, let the dude that drives the boat decide where to go fishing. Whatever's in town, fish it. Practice. That's the key. The cooler is not a trash it's receptacle. <laughs> no, man. Chasing the Sun has been brought to you by Minn Kota. Half Pitch Tackle. Get out there. Fish Monkey, Performance Fishing Gloves. Panama City Inshore, these guys can fish. And by Visit Panama City Beach, Real Fun Beach. You know what's funny is we can actually see how many views these shows get. Basically, this is like one of our most popular shows we've done. There's a perfect fishing guide out there for everyone. We created this show to help y'all find the perfect fishing guide. These little tips and tricks are gonna help you find the right guide for you. You know what's funny is some of the things that people learned in this show, they're still applying today. There's just one little tiny patch. There's no bottom showing around it at all. They won't come off that at all. If it's like a fairly large reef, you know, they'll kind of roam around. But this is why there's nobody here. There's probably very few people who know about this because it's so small. That brings me to a point. So if you're a client and you get on a boat and you think you're gonna bring a GPS oh, and that's a bad idea. <laughs> take some of these spots, that is about the lowest possible thing you could absolutely do as a client. Don't guide the guide. You know, let the dude that drives the boat decide where to go fishing. Whatever's in town, fish it. Practice, that's the key. The cooler is not a trash it's receptacle. <laughs> no, man. Travis said something in this show well, about- Look, my house is like 12 miles from my boat, and there's one store that's open on Friday, Saturday, and Sunday for me to get breakfast. So if you're coming to fish with me, please bring me a sandwich, a breakfast sandwich, because I haven't the opportunity to do so. It's so important for the client to bring food for the guide. For several reasons, most importantly, we're always working, you know, leading up to the fishing we're preparing, you know. Guiding's not like, the, you, get, you know, the client gets on the boat and it's like eight hours of actual work. No, 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 no. It was like three hours ahead of it and three hours afterwards, because you got to prep the boat, catch the bait, do all that stuff. But more importantly, if they go by a, a you know, a restaurant or somewhere to pick up breakfast or lunch, if they bring lunch for me, it's such a better day for them. I mean, I'm sure you're going to be in a better mood. Yeah, sure. for sure. For your enjoyment to help him have a good meal with you. <laughs>
So as soon as he says that on TV for the whole world to see, all of a sudden, I mean, I didn't know this show had aired. Here's your sandwich, And people Justin. started showing up with breakfast every morning. And I was like, why are you bringing me breakfast? They're like, well, I thought we were supposed to. You know what's really cool about the show? What is that? We actually might have a little influence. Oh, we are helping people learn. There's no doubt. We're in it to create an experience, to teach people, help people, not just to catch fish. That's the bonus, that's the product of the teaching and the entertaining and all that. That's a rudder jacket. But, but they're a slot limit like a redfish. When they get real big, then you gotta let them go again. Cool, going over. So we've had so much fun doing all these shows together. Um, I don't think we'll ever be just alike. And that's what makes us fun. Yeah. Is there's always a few different ways to do these things. We play upon each other and it works out. So there's many more adventures out there waiting. I'm in. Let's go.